Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. I am your host, David Dodge. Today, I am joined by a special guest, George Salas. And this guy is the king of Airbnbs, guys. He did $150,000 in gross Airbnb revenues last month. Holy cow. George, welcome to the show. David, thank you for uh, the warm welcome, and I appreciate that. appreciate you having me, brother. So I'm excited to be here, man. Let's talk some shop. Let's talk Nugget, shop. Man. man, I actually got a chance to meet George down in Florida. Oh, man, it was probably about two months ago. I was at a networking, like, mastermind type event. Uh, can't stress enough, guys, on how important it is to get out of your comfort zone and go to some of these real estate events. I would have never been able to meet George if I had not done that. So I'm just super honored. I'm grateful for your time today, George. And I'm just honored to really have you on the show. Let's jump in, bro. 150 K. That's right. <laughs> Holy cow. Now this is short term rentals is what you're focusing on. That's right. Yeah. So we've got a portfolio of around 40 um, and 120 of those came from our 19 houses, right? So we've got 19 houses and uh, the remaining are apartments that we do lease arbitrage. And we can talk about that in just a little bit. Sure. Uh, but houses is our gravy, is our bread and butter. And we really focus on single family residential homes that are bringing us anywhere between seven and $14,000 a house a month, which is incredible. Wow. Okay. I missed that. How many properties are you leasing right now? Um, we do both methods. We purchase. I mean, I mean, leasing out to, to rent short term. Oh, uh, about 40. 40. Holy cow. That is, you said about 19 of those are singles, single families. That's it. So about half. Wow. That's amazing. So 40 is a lot, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not, it's not really that many, right? Like, are you trying to grow it? Or what do you think? And I, and I know it's a lot because there's a lot of operations behind it. I have 51, but but they're not short terms. They're long term. It's way different. I don't own, you know, 40 couches and love seats and rugs and spatulas and all those things. Right. I just have the house and I lease them. So, wow, that's amazing. David, so, yeah, we, we've got 40 and it is a lot of work. We've, we have six virtual assistants on this side. So 12 total, six on the education side. Um, we also have, we, we have, I've just brought in a COO to help us scale. And the goal is scaling, you know, with our 16 employees. Wow. Team of 16 right now, we operate at a higher level. And the reason why we have so many is, you know, we've got HR, we have an operations manager, an admin back office, someone on site, a maintenance guy, a uh, community manager, managing the cleaners and several cleaning in house. Right? Love so it. Where all the 16 come. But yes, the goal is scaling, but scaling strategically, right? Scaling at a higher level than we did the first two years, right? So we've all, I've only been doing this for almost three years. And so I was going to say, let's take a step back here. We're, we, we hit this at like 150 <laughs> miles an hour. When did you get started investing in real estate? Let's start with the basics. Absolutely. Um, quick story. Okay. I started my journey when I was six in Peru, not knowing any English. So I'm sitting here in the living room of my parents' house and boom, my mom calls me over and says, George, I need to talk to you and your brother. Boom. We go in the room and she's literally leaving my dad. So we moved to a different city, right? So I'm sitting here, no father, didn't get a, get a chance to say bye to my dad. Nine years go by. Now I'm just in a small town. I get to see my father again after nine years. And my mom, my mom is actually getting married. So we moved here. She, you know, did the online dating thing back in 1998, got married. We moved here to the U.S. I'm from Peru. Um, and then boom, right. I come here at 15 years old. And where do you live now? I live in Houston, brother. 
Yes, sir. So um, come here 19 years old and boom, go straight into learning English, going to school. And I was actually in the nightlife for 10 years as an event promoter. So I know tens of thousands of people. So I ran a company um, for about 10 years and then I opened a nightclub. Right, lost my butt completely off in that nightclub. Um, I was an investor marketer, uh, so that's that's the way I came into the partnership. And then all of a sudden, our entire portfolio, well, our entire nightclub went down. Keep thinking mm. portfolio, right? Um, because we uh, had just a bad operation, a bad operator, and there's nothing I could do about it. So I was left without nothing, like with nothing. So this is 2017. And this is when I get into real estate. And, um, and, and from then, you know, I've done the wholesaling thing. I've flipped. So I've done about 80 real estate transactions overall. Um, and in 2018, this is when I started with short term rentals. So not right? that long. No, it's about three, less than three years ago. Hey, you have done amazing to get to 40 in, in that short of time. That's really, really cool. I love it. I love it. So why short term rentals, George? Let's start there. Why would somebody want to do short-term rentals. Obviously, they're going to want 150 k in gross revenue a month, right? But why would somebody start with short-term rentals? Well, the reason why I started and the reason why I'm in it now are two different reasons. I'll break it down for you. Let's hear it. The reason what I've originally started, I just wanted enough cash flow so I could create a short, uh, a real estate business where I was flipping, I was wholesaling, right? And uh, that was the goal. My goal today and the reason why today is to build wealth and to create an empire and help and teach other people how to do the same through this new method. Because when I started short-term rentals, it was apartments and they made me okay money, right? They did well. I, you know, I was making pretty decent money. I started four months into the business. I was at 20 apartments and I never made the margins that I'm making now. And it's because with houses, you can make about 10 times the profit right? In a, that apartments, just because of so many factors. And why short term rentals is the way to go, right? I've built my team and I have a large payroll, but I still am able to pretty much be financially free, right? Yeah. Building, 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 building. I love so it. Now it's a different reason than before, right? But I, yep. I love the business and I love teaching it to other people too. Man, me too. I love, I love doing these podcasts just for this reason. I'm always learning new things, but I love sharing and helping other people along their own journey as well too, man. That's so cool. It feels great. It does. Right? It does. It feels really good. I, I get tons of emails and, and, and just random social media messages about episodes that we do and people are loving it, man. So again, I'm really happy to have you on the show and to have the ability to, you know, spread, to spread your message. So it's awesome. So how many of the ones are you, do you own or have like, you know, financing on essentially you own? Versus the ones that you're kind of sandwiching. Um, I've got about seven or eight that I own. Awesome. Um, whether some of them are going to be uh, JVs with uh, partners that I started with in the business I was sleeping that we converted into long-term uh, financing. Some of them I picked up subject to the mortgage. Some of them I picked up um, just, you know, we did the BRR. Um, and uh, what else did we do? Um, and we sandwich about five or six, so rental arbitrage five or six. And then we have five sort of JV slash with client partners that we are just involved on a, some, some type of joint venture um, and, and management site. And we don't really own the real estate, right? Sure. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's what our portfolio, and these are just clients that we work with very closely. So it could be students, it could be a, a partner or a client that has an extra property. So about, about a third of each strategy. Right, man, I love it, and you're so you're doing multiple things here. Very, very cool. Very cool. So, tell us, man, what what does it take to get to one hundred and fifty thousand a month in gross revenue? Right. If somebody is listening, we have a lot of people that listen to the show that are that are really new, and, and they you know they're just getting started, maybe trying to get their first deal, or they've done a couple deals. Um, why should one look at short term rentals? You already mentioned, you know, essentially as much as ten times the profit on the, you know, on the margin side of things. Um, but why, why would one, you know, want to look at that versus all the other things? Cause there's so many shiny objects with real estate, right? Like you yeah. can, you can wholesale, you can fix and flip. You can be the landlord. You can be landlord 2.0, which is what I refer to the, the short-term guys. 
right? They're, they're basically making more money doing the same business, but there's a little bit more to it, of course. Uh, but then you can get creative and you can do like lease options and subject twos and all these different things, right? Why would one want to look, you know, deeply into short term? Um, I tell everyone, I tell people that if you want to create freedom quickly and quicker without having to wait three, four months, aka when you flip or wholesale, right? When you flip four, five, six months, and when you wholesale, you know, a month to two months to close the deals. I, I was flipping, I was wholesaling, and I still love to, you know, rehab properties and turn them into long-term, you know, long-term financing and short-term rentals. But when you actually want to make an extra 5K a month net and or maybe 10K a month, you want to add that to your portfolio in addition to what you have going on, right? Or you want to build an empire and do 100 grand a month and a net 50,000, you know, and you have a little bit of, a little bit more money, you know? So there are a couple of reasons there. You want to create wealth a little bit quicker than long-term rentals with a smaller portfolio to where you don't have to, you know, go crazy. So 10K, a month net is the way to go, right? Ten, anyone could live on $10,000 a month. Yeah, right? for sure. So that's one way. And then if you want to build massively, you know, and, and you want to go all bananas, you can also do that with short-term rentals, just like the way we're doing it. We're going bananas. We're going massive. We're going huge, right? You guys are. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So it, and it's just the beginning. So um, I would not. See, see, that's why I asked in the very beginning, where are you going <laughs> to take this thing to, man? Because 40 is a lot. But it's all about perspective. To the guy that's got zero or two, one or three, 40 is a ton. But to the guy that's got 600, it's like 40, bro, step it up. But like, so you yeah. got to look at it both ways. You know what I'm saying? That's why I led with that question. And you are doing amazing things, bro. Love it. So happy that I got a chance to meet you and learn more about this, of course. But I know you're going to double and triple this in the next three to five years. I know it. I, I appreciate it. And when we started, you know, um, we didn't make the 50% margins that we make now on these right. houses. Even in the houses that we launched, we we're still bringing in three, four thousand dollars making, you know, 20, 30%. And then once you tweak and refine, one house could take you to freedom. We're actually, you know, like I call it, hey guys, you want to get freedom, we can take you with five houses to freedom, right? That's what we're, that's our, our emblem, our, our, our signature, five houses to freedom, right? And, um, um, I think it's a great model, man. It's a, it's a beautiful model. Um, and even you can outsource it and build it to the point that you can, from day one, not have to be a landlord 2.0, like you said. Mm -hmm. right? You could essentially partner with someone like us or, partner or build your own co-hosting team, right? They call it co-hosting. And then, um, you know, you can partner with a management company to grow with them, right? And if you go with this strategy, Right. And I'm talking about median houses, you know, and, uh, you know, niche it down to each market to finding the lowest price per square foot. Um, you can build a really nice portfolio, make a lot of money and still pay a management company their 20, 25 percent and still make amazing margins. So amazing it margins have to be it doesn't have to be you becoming or building another job. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. We all get into real estate for freedom. And, you know, it's very rare that people actually get freedom from real estate. They're just hustling and hustling and hustling. So anytime that somebody can use real estate to get their time back, I'm a huge fan of. Huge. And it, you just literally described that. Yep. So there's two routes to go. Do it yourself and then learn it. You want a small bomb and pop or build massively on an average of $10,000 grows per house if you're a real estate investor that wants to build something big outsource everything and it's still passive it's still passive i yeah. love it i love it well let's let's circle back to that towards the end because i know that you have a program that you love partnering with people on right and teaching and coaching so we'll talk about that here shortly a couple quick questions for you one um where are these properties leased i know airbnb is the big one but are there other hubs and then the second thing is, is, are these properties unique to being like destination or vacation? Are they local in your market? Or are they scattered out throughout the country? Fill me in. 95% of our portfolio is going to be uh, in urban, you know, in suburban, you know, not vacation. So I'm talking about neighborhoods outside 
of the main central hub of the city. So, so are most of yours in Houston then, or near where you live, within, let's say, 50 miles? You know, within 50 miles. That's correct. Sure. So yeah. Like radius north, south. So you don't have them in South Carolina and North Dakota and Phoenix, right? They're not all over. Not yet. We're, <laughs> not yet. Okay, cool. We're, we, are, we are expanding to Phoenix and... Um, we uh, we've got something cooking with Corey, and uh, we're doing Florida too. So. Sweet, hey, I love it, man. That's growth right there. That's growth. So right now they're 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 in your area though, because that's what I'd imagine most people would do to start is they would either do one somewhere that they'd want to go visit, right? Give them reason to go to the beach or to go to the mountains or something along those lines, or they would do a couple in their backyard. That's kind of how I would envision most people starting. So with yours, you had said that they're they're somewhat local. Um, none of these are like beach themed or are they, or, you know what I'm saying? Are they just normal houses that are equipped very nicely and, or how, yeah, how do you equip them? What, 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 what do you guys typically do? And whenever you're, you know, acquiring a new property, regardless if it's a purchase property, or if it's a partnership property, or if it's a lease property, that's irrelevant in my opinion at this point. So we have a, a process. Okay. And, and our process has five components, five key elements. Okay. When we go find a property, we analyze our market, right? So that's number one. And within that market, we see if there is you know, supply and demand for us to be able to get what we're looking for, right? So we'll analyze the market and we'll analyze what is the most profitable property in that market. Is it a three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom, set an apartment? What are the price per square foot? So you're analyzing your market on the short term rental side. You're also analyzing the market on the real estate side. Okay. So then step number two, we actually, we actually create uh, the property itself. We are very, very focused on understanding the property and learning. You know, we create an avatar around each property and around each guest. So um, we focus on grabbing properties that already have the amenities we desire that that market wants. Right. And we put the number of people at that market once when, when I mean once, what is the biggest demand, right? Is it going to be on two bedrooms, three bedrooms, five bedrooms, eight bedrooms, seven bedrooms, right? And then third is we focus on the sign. That's our third component, the sign and amenities. And these are amenities that are not attached to the structure. Um, these are amenities that, you know, could be moved around such as kitchen, small kitchen appliances, um, really nice linens and beds. So our amenities are going to be a little bit higher end. Right. When we stepped up our game on the sign and amenities, we saw increase and increase on revenue by 20, 30 percent. Right. Number four, we focus on what we call our market. Right. And this is your listing strategy. This is your booking strategy and then your pricing strategy. Right. If you have those doubts, then this is probably the harder one for anyone that uh, wants to start his business and knows absolutely nothing. It takes a little bit longer to, to learn, especially someone that you know, that doesn't like or know much tech. So that being our fourth point and our fifth point of focus is our guest experience. And in that simply is just the management and what kind of, what do you offer? And that part could be outsourced. So 80% of your success in short-term rentals comes before you launch the property, which is those four first, first four components, right? So you, that's how you make your money, making sure you understand what your, what's your market, grabbing the right property with the right design and amenities, and the, the right mar marketing dialed in. So right. Get everything full and booked. Love it. Man, you nailed my question. That was awesome. W Thanks. Where are they typically leasing? Is it Airbnb, HomeAway, and VRBO? Those are the big three, essentially. And yay. So, yeah, we're, um, I mean, VRBO, about five to 10% of our business. Um, Airbnb, the remaining. And uh, we've kind of gone, we were, we had a we you know we had a direct booking site and kind of get away get away from it so um, we're relaunching that because we're partnering up with the, another uh, PMS another property management software that allows us to dial in the marketing right so no matter what you do unless you start launching ads right um, and we don't do ads yet you're gonna have most of your business come from different platforms so so I would say Airbnb number one. BRBO number two and home away slash booking.com number three. Nice. Okay. So there's multiple places that they're being leased. And then I would imagine that there's tools that would help manage all that, right? Because if, if one of them gets booked, the other platforms need to know that, Hey, don't double book. Right. 
Yes, absolutely. So yeah, we have all the tools that we need to make sure that things like that don't happen, right? And it all can get a little confusing at first, but you don't have to get started like that. You know, if you have, you know, if you have, you know, one to five properties, uh, for the most part, unless they're in, you know, uh, I would say they're vacation rental-ish properties. And even though most of our properties are not in vacation rental areas, they do have pools and they do have the amenities that you can use and put on the VRBO because VRBO nice. won't get the apartments rented, right? But they will get the houses rented. So we have- Gotcha. So VRBO is really more for the vacation areas then? Is that what you're telling me? Vacation properties, even in the- Properties, in got it. So it's like a little apartment building that's got one unit that's being Airbnb probably won't do well on VB, VRBO then. Unless it's like a block from the beach, of course. But if it's like out in the middle of Kansas, like- That's correct. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm learning stuff, man. That's that's awesome. I, I had no idea. So Airbnb is really the catch-all then. It is very, very good right now, brother. And- um, just because of COVID, right? Uh, so that was my next question. Has COVID helped or hurt it or both? COVID helped the houses, homes. COVID hurt apartments that are, you know, apartments. I, I get America, that. I can know? see why, I mean, like, how yeah. that would happen and why. Yeah, because people are clustered, but houses they can get away from other people and or isolate or just have space. Yeah. Space is really what COVID yeah. created. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. So, so um, tell us a little bit about the ones that aren't the houses. Cause that's what I do typically is houses, right? I buy a house, I fix it up. I rent it out. I take, take it to a bank and get a refi, pay back my lender. It's called the Burr method. And I do it over and over and over again. I've done about 130 to 150 of these. And I'm currently sitting on about 51 properties, right? That's kind of what I do. I wholesale the rest, right? So I keep the best ones and I wholesale the rest. I got one, I actually have two Airbnbs. It's in the same building though. So it's one property, just two, two units. Um, so, but my knowledge is very small. So tell me a little bit about doing this on, you know, the property that's not the single family, which could be a couple different scenarios, of course. Right. So you have, the more unique you get, the better, right? So it could be an apartment. So you're going to start off with, let's just say, um, there's several types of Airbnb categorizes um, as, as far as type, property types. And you're going to have like your third, you know, garage apartments or third party or, you know, side guest houses, right? And then you're going to have your, your, your apartments, and you're going to have your homes, you're going to have your unique places, you know, and then you're going to have your boutique hotels. The higher you get in the spectrum, the more people are going to pay for them. So if you start with these small little apartments, you know, or guest houses, you're not going to get that much you can sure. make money. Right. And that's what I started with. I started I've actually with- stayed in a lot of these like side apartments or like some people will like rent their basement out like random. Yeah. Right. But like <laughs> I've done it. Yeah. You know? And then, but yeah, I get how the tiers would definitely change or adjust as it became, you know, more unique or has more, you know, amenities. Yeah. So, and we focus now uh, obviously in creating unique desirable properties and you don't have to spend a bunch of money to create those but it is going to cost a little bit more than your normal right so and then i think that our sweet spot we found our single family homes you know median prices and in any city will work right any city in the united states and probably in the world so wow that's really really awesome okay a couple more quick questions here so when you are getting a new property you know getting ready to go online you got to go furnish all these properties, right? All of them are right. furnished. So do you have like a, like basically like a template that you use internally with your team that says, here's all the stuff that we're buying or is every property going to be different? And I would think that is maybe a little bit of both. Um, the only difference is uh, our, our end and end in mind, right? So if we, um, on board a property that we believe is going to make $10,000 a month. We, we take this luxury, you know, luxury framework that we have with all the lists of 
everything you need in that property and, and, and the storyboards that we created for that last property, because we've done so many staging and design jobs for our own properties, that's insane, right? So we do have lists for each type of property. Now, there are a lot of um, smaller amenities that just I recommend anyone using. It doesn't matter. Let's hear those. Give me a couple. Absolutely. So um, one of them would be hotel quality linens and, and bed covers. You know, um, uh, we've got some tech that we use, like ring doorbells. So they're all going to be the same. All the tech is the same, right? Ring doorbells and you got your nest and all that. Um, and we also have uh, your kitchen appliances like the Hero Knife Set and the Ninja Blender and just a few things like that that are going to be the same. The only difference would be where you've got a three bedroom luxury versus a five bedroom. You've got a different count of beds and linens, right? More towels, uh, more of everything. So, so it just varies on certain areas, certain, certain levels. But um, for the most part, what we do now is more uniform than it's ever been. Um, right. So we focus on you systematized it. You put together a process so you can have freedom and you're not sitting behind the computer all day design. There you go. Right. <laughs> like buttons, uh, you know, and my team does that. Right. Um, yeah. We run this operation from here, from this office. So um, Mona, I've got, you know, uh, I've got, you know, Mona on my side who helps us design and stage everything. You know, she's here in the office as well. And then she basically just, we're, we're staging four properties and she takes care of all of them, you know, and, and that's what she does. Man, that's cool. George, <laughs> tell us about your program. I'm curious to learn a little bit more about that. You had mentioned that you love helping people and coaching them and working with them, even partnering with them. And I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Absolutely, brother. So our program is composed of three main components, right? I've gone through the five key elements of short-term model success, right? When, I, when you asked that question earlier. So we simply teach you how to do those five the right way, the way we do them so that you can bring in a, to any property, you know, anywhere between seven, $8,000 a month instead of three to four, which most people do on their own, right? You could launch an Airbnb like, like the ones we have or just any house and do pretty decent, make a little bit 500 to a thousand. You can work with us, that same Airbnb, same property with just some tweaks through the five components, you know, you're gonna make $8,000. So we work closely through three different methods with, you know, with our students. One of them is gonna be through training. So we have a library of trainings, just like everybody else, but people don't need so much information this day in you know, this, this, this dying age, people need guidance, right? Information is everywhere. Information is everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> guidance is way more important than information. In fact, I've kind of like actually gotten rid of some of my courses recently and, and, you know, and shrink them down just because it's like you, most people that come into our program and ours is more for wholesaling. It's definitely not on the short-term side of anything, right? Mm -hmm. But they, it's weird. Most people already know most of what they need to know they're just not executing or they need to make a little tweaks. Just like you said, I cannot agree Absolutely. more. Love that. So you guys, but you do have the trainings though. Cause that does help. Of course, you guys have the trainings mm -hmm. and then, yeah, go on. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, of course. No, no problem. Brother. Yeah, we have the trainings that are there and, and then the support and the coaching that's needed. That's our main bread and butter, right? That's what really used to get people results. So people come into the program, we offer one-on-one -on -one support through several channels, right? And with the support, they're able to utilize the base, the base, which is going to be your trainings. Um, and then on the calls, they get part training and mostly support and coaching, you know, as they, let's just say some, you know, somebody wants to cover, you know, a certain area or most people have, have they're struggling with, let's just say acquisitions, right? So we will do a little bit of training on the new strategy and acquisitions and, and basically work with our students right here one-on-one -on -one and seeing why they're not figuring out that, you know, that short-term rental revenue or why they can't get their property to perform. So we'll fix, train a little bit and then fix and coach them right, right here one-on-one, -on -one, you know, with um, basically some, you know, each person on the other side working through each, each student on whatever they need at that time. Right. And then the community and, um, you know, I would say 
Uh, we've got a great community. You know, it's a third component. So there are people in the program that work with each other. Like we JV, like we just JV with some of our students. We bought a 5,000 square foot home that have been in with, with me for almost uh, a year, actually, right? And then there are other students that are working with each other. So having that support in that community from other people other than your coach is also great because you need to be around people that are like-minded to get there, right? Because it's not just about the training and the coaching. Sometimes you get overwhelmed and you're like, oh my God, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, how should I tweak this? Do you mind kind of working with me or showing me? And the students are supporting each other, which is what I love, right? I, I love seeing how they help each other and, uh, and then they're just getting results. That's right. No, man, I absolutely, absolutely love that. Um, well, George, where can people go to learn more about that group and that program? Absolutely. So um, if you guys want to get indoctrinated with, um, well, what the content that we put out, um, our Facebook group is the new real estate investor.com. And if someone is ready to actually talk to my team um, or myself, then that website is George Salas, G E O R G E S A L A S 360.com, right? George Salas 360.com. And that's my personal website. Um, and all you guys have to do is go in there and there's a schedule a call type of thing. And there's my WhatsApp and my Facebook Messenger and all that. So I'm accessible. And um, if anybody wants to chat, we can chat and see how we can Awesome. So George Salas, S-A-L-A-S, 360.com. And the 360 sites are pretty cool. I like those sites. And then you said the, re I'm sorry, you said the, the new real estate investor.com as yeah, well? that's the Facebook group. Okay. So going to, so is it the new real estate investor.com that just forwards to the Facebook group then or? That's it. If oh, someone's not ready, right, and you just want to learn more about the business, what, sure. you know, because not everybody's going to be ready, and that's okay. Come hang out with us in the group. Right? Love and it. You, George, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on today, bro. You are absolutely crushing it. I can't wait to just track you. I'm going to have to bring you back on the show in like six months to get a status update because you've already kind of told me that you're looking to start partnerships in some other cities and just expand and now that you have a team, this is so cool, right? It, it takes people years to get over the hump. But once they're over the hump, they, mm -hmm. they basically have access to the, to the, not only the knowledge, but the resources to do amazing things, bro. And you are there, which is so cool. So over the next six months to a year, you're going to be doing some crazy stuff. And over the next couple of years, even more crazy stuff. So I'm just super excited to know you and get to watch and track your success. And like I said, we're going to have to bring you back on for a status update, you know, four, six months down the road. Again, very, very cool, George. Thanks for coming on. Guys, go follow George. You can look up all of his information, all of his socials, and even book a call with him if you like at georgesalas360.com or check out George's Facebook group, the new real estate investor.com. George, any parting words? for our audience today. I appreciate you having me here, David. And uh, I, I just want to communicate to everybody out there, whether you're starting and, and you haven't done a deal, you know, uh, whether you've done a bunch of deals and are struggling or whether you are successful and listening to this, you know, uh, stay focused, have faith, believe, believe and get you 90% there, you know, and just continue on your journey. And then one big thing is, I've learned to focus not on the end result, the, 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 the big goal, more in the journey. So I fall in love with the process, I fall in love with growth, and I fall in love with just everything around it, right? And not, if I don't hit my goal, then, you know, I, I hit my goal. But if you, if you actually focus on growth, purpose, and process, then you'll never have to worry about the deadline. So go get it out there, and uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Holy cow, growth, purpose, process. Those are so important things. Those three things, man, George, you crushed this episode. Thank you so much for coming on. Guys, thanks for listening. Go check out George's information, georgesalas360.com. Until next time, thanks. signing off. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit 
freewholesalecourse.com. The most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy, you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth.